Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, this is Malik Foster, a co-host for the Cowboys podcast. Um, I'd like to welcome you guys to our show today. I'm joined by my fellow co-hosts. Um, I'm Everett Stevenson, and we are down one of our co-hosts, Samantha Adams, this week. Um, so you guys get the good episode. No, I'm just a good job. But, uh, <laughs> um, we definitely going to go ahead and get ready to pop it off with the interesting topic today. Uh, this is one that's kind of um, being reinforced to some things that we've kind of seen that's been going on in the media uh, for a while, you know, for forever, basically. But it's a topic in which we wanted to look to address dealing with your spouse and your, you know, your significant other or whatever. And what that says about you. Right. Like, so we all know a lot of times people get into relationships for a lot of different reasons. Um traditionally it's kind of always been like a situation where people will get together to kind of, you know, strengthen their families, you know? So, um, back in the day, people will kind of merge together in order to, you know, strengthen their families, um, legacies and ties. Um, and today's modern world, you know, so people get married for love and looks, I believe. And so, um, we kind of wanted to look at what are some of the things that people kind of take from, when you're in a relationship and how you're moving or how you look and what that says about, you know, the person that you're with. Right. Um, so one of the things that we want to go ahead and go into early on is when we talked about, you know, the behaviors of a pattern, I mean, of the partners, right. We all know generally guys tend to think of women and look at them and, you know, and judge them based off of their beauty and their looks and their image. Right. So I think that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of people that say that women are a lot more um, aesthetically focused a lot of times than they may be on other parts of their personalities or things, because generally speaking, you know, a lot of guys are more concerned with their um, their beauty as opposed to other things. Um, and so... We wanted to talk about that, you know. Hey, hey, so uh, you want to get into, or maybe I should say, it, say it like a little bit. Of what sparked this conversation today with us is, um, like we we notice some celebrities when they go out, and just you know, a Western standard as today is that women like to dress more free and um, show off their bodies, uh, regardless of whether they're single or married or in a committed relationship, whatever, so have you. And um, we wanted to look at how that uh, actually affects the image of the relationship and do other people view that as something that can possibly tarnish a person's relationship, whether it be the man from the men's perspective, since we're men. And then also look how it can affect the ladies as well from you know our perspective. Um, we usually have our goals here to give a little bit of the women's perspective, but since it's just us guys, we're just going to give us give our manly perspective from uh, the situation, the men's perspective. So um, I just yeah, want to so, give that little background there. Go ahead. E. We were going to um, go ahead and look at one of the first things that kind of sparked some of our thoughts on this topic, which is looked at um, a conversation that was had, which a couple conversations that was had on this show. Um, we we're talking about the Red Table Talk conversations um, because there were very ones that were shocking to some of the imagery that we will say of the partners of some of the, in the some of the women that were speaking on the show. Um, at one point, one time, I think there was a show where, um, I think it was Aisha Curry was on and she, she may have mentioned of how like, you know, a lot of women kind of throw themselves at her husband because he's in a notable eye, you know, he's a public figure and things of that nature. And she was, she said something to the effect of like how she wished, you know, guys would kind of throw themselves at her. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, like, um, kind of, it, it almost seems like it felt like a statement saying, like, I want to have groupies, too. You know? Um, and that was one statement I think we've seen in the past. Another type of thing that we talked about or saw in the history was, uh, of course, the whole thing, situation with Will and Jada um, and the whole entanglement conversation, that was kind of one that was a little tough conversation for people to see. And also looked like it was a time in which um, it looked like someone else's significant other just weren't necessarily happy in the relationship or I won't say happy, but 
it just didn't look like it, it fit the traditional modes, right? Like if you've seen a wife in general speaking about either cheating out or stepping out on a relationship, or if you see a wife, you know, kind of seeking the attention of other males, those type of things were things where it looked like, you know, it caused the, the issue to things. And then, of course, you know, we've had recent imagery where we've seen, you know, women um, dressing a little bit more provocative based off of uh, some of the things that they may have been in, in some of the industries that they're in um, at certain events. Like, you know, you have like the Met Galas, you have other um, important um, red carpet type of events. And we've seen women kind of show up with see-through outfits. I think one of the most notable one was the Sierra outfit that she had on and it kind of was like a see-through type of thing. But we've seen um, a lot of women kind of wear really provocative type of um, outfits, even though they were either married or in relationships. And I, I think that's also gotten people to, to kind of speak on relationships in particular and what, what individuals felt like may be appropriate and what may not, you know. I think it also depends on the type of person that's in their relationship. Will that person's partner be comfortable enough with themselves and with their relationship in order for them to feel like, hey, it's okay, you know, go ahead, baby, let them all, let, let them see it. You worked for it. You worked hard for that body. You know what I'm saying? You should be able to show it off. Or do they have a mindset where they don't want everybody you know, seeing everything that they are able to see, per se. Let's see, see, let me jump in here because I feel like, you know, since we're talking about the imagery of like, you know, what the females are wearing, from like my perspective, I feel like, you know, that women can be classy, but they don't have to like show everything. Like, like we could look at uh, Savannah James. LeBron James' wife, like, she's a beautiful woman, and she's still classy. She doesn't have to be naked. Like, you you still want to represent your spouse very well. Like, so when you're just, like, trying to be naked and show too much, it feels like you're just trying to undermine, you know, your spouse, and you're trying to draw more attention to yourself, and you're just more concerned about yourself instead of the marriage, in my opinion. Like when you're in this this scenario, what I'm talking about is if you're married, right? So if you're married and you're a lady and you're trying to reveal intimate parts of your body in the public eye, I feel like you're trying to draw your attention away from the marriage, from what y'all got going on, just to focus on yourself. You're not really concerned about the, the marital unit, the partnership between you and your husband or your spouse, but you're more concerned about yourself. So I, I see that permeating throughout society nowadays. And that could be also a link to why relationships don't last long because people um, aren't really representing themselves well in a public eye. And I feel like that causes a lot of internal issues within a relationship to where, you know, those issues never really go away because, you know, I feel like society, especially in the West, promotes you know being more free being more liberal but that hurts the relationship because there has to be some sort of restrictions everything can't just be free like there has to be some rules i, I know we're going to get into rules later but there has to be some rules or standards that you know we have to follow some guidelines some guideposts where people have to follow with their relationships because i mean if that's the case you're just in a relationship with everybody or you just do whatever there always has to be some sort of rules to anything you want to do, especially if you want to be successful in anything. And relationships and, and is not I, any different. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. I was going to also say, I think also when we look at this topic and we look at it, I, I, in addition to just, you know, um, discussing imagery um, and the way a, a person actually physically looks, um, I think another thing is, too, the access that people have to a, a person, right? Like if we see a girl who may be on the scene a lot, but she's supposedly in a relationship or married, but yet, you know, they in the faces of a lot of other individuals. Mind you, now I get it. You know, some people that might be their business. That might just be how they, they have to conduct themselves. They have to move and shake in a lot of different rooms. That's one thing. But you know, there's you kind of can tell the difference sometimes when it becomes from just having fun, having conversations as opposed to being a little bit more flirty, a little bit more touchy, a little bit more, you know, um, Philly, if you will, um, those type of conversations that people may have, that's something. Or just allowing people to, you know, even get access to your space. You know, if you're in a relationship, sometimes 
some people feel it's best that you keep some things private, that you don't uh, entertain certain things so that you don't even allow yourself to be viewed in certain ways, you know? Um, so you may not prolong conversations or, you know what I mean? You may simply try to, you know, move a little bit differently. But I also wanted to speak real quickly on the male side because I, I wanted to just say um, briefly ways in which guys have, you know, made women that they were dating um, maybe seem or look um, out of place or out of pocket or look like they're living in chaos, if you will, if on the outside looking in, of course. Um, one of those situations could be, you know, a guy who's ultimately dating a lot of people. Um, we've seen that situation kind of play out recently in the Diddy situation where, you know, um, again, he was having a conversation, he's been dating a couple women, da 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 Some people get mad because there's like, you know, one of the girls that they've seen him dating often, the uh, young Miami young lady, who's always kind of can't champion him. He's always kind of looking like she's showing him like ride or die energy. You always have a good time, which to me, it's like, okay, he's a single man having fun dating. That's the life. Right. But um, some people feel as though like, okay, well, since they see you with that person and they see that person claiming you, you know what I'm saying? That that means that y'all have to be together and it's supposed to be just y'all. They probably have whatever understanding that they have going on, but that imagery looked at crazy when again, of course, you know, they show images of him having a child, da da da. People like, oh dang, you know, you got this baby, but y'all supposed to be dating, da 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 da. All types of stuff. So that was one. Um, another one could be an example of like where women may be dating a guy who may, you know, um, be a physical trainer or something to that effect, and you know, they may feel like some of the imagery and the posting that they post are images that are sexually, you know, kind of in, in, inducive, right? Like, so it's them showing off their body, it's them showing off their frame. Of course, they could be just part of their industry and them showing people, like, look at the hard work that I put in, da 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 But there also could be... But that's part of their job, work. though. Correct. We're talking that, about when, it, that's what I'm saying. when it's, like, it outside the scope of your job, like a public event that's not part of your job or profession, like, say, if you're invited... You know, more so those type of scenarios, or, or even at the same time, though, it could be part of their job. But they like they could be a trainer, and they could be one of the best trainers. You know what I'm saying in the world. But it doesn't mean like every post that they have is them shirts. You know what I'm saying? Right, something right, to that effect. Right. You know what I'm saying? It could be them actually showing them training someone else, or something to that effect. Where it's like, hey, look at the progress, or look at me actually doing the work, versus it just be every post that they see is you working out as opposed to you actually training someone and working them out and doing your thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, while all of those are elements, I think it's just certain things where people can look at it and say, oh, okay, this is a little douchey. Or like you said, maybe it's not that person's business. They just, you know, have a really great body and then you go to their profile pic and that's what you see. Girls will look at that and be like, oh, he kind of, you know, whatever. And then lastly, of course, it's the good old gray sweatpants pics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, you know, Women look at you a little differently if they feel like, you know, you always got prints showing in your pen, um, in your pictures and things of that nature. I think women will kind of view you as being, you know, kind of thotty type behavior, thottish, you know, horror type but, behavior. But see, that's where that's I like the, type of thing the double do. standard come into play, right? So if you do that, it's like, okay, you know, it's not really, women will say, well, that's not really an issue it's more celebrated or whatever. No one cares as opposed to a woman when she's revealing herself, it's a bigger issue. And I would say, yeah, we know what double standards exist and rightfully so, because, you know, everybody kind of understands without really saying that we hold sacred a woman's body more than a man's body. No one really cares about a man's body as much. Like we just look into this type of sex industry, this adult industry, I should say, um, you know, women get paid more, they're marketed more, branded more in this type of adult model. You know, when BD is the standard in the industry, w women tend to get paid more or have more opportunities. If they're not getting paid more, they definitely get more opportunities and they're definitely marketed more, right? Because, you know, that adult entertainment, that kind of stuff sells. So, um, you know, it is a double standard, but, you know, there's an understanding why that double standard exists, right? E, because, you know, 
people aren't paying to see guys in great sweatpants. I mean, not even women are paying enough. So it's like, you know, we got to market what what people were trying to pay for. Now, that's great on a, on a standpoint of corporate, but, you know, when you your own brand, you feel what I'm saying? An individual themselves, they might promote what people are willing to pay for. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. um, in the same token, you know what I mean? Right. That's what they're going to do. But versus, like you said, if it's, if it's an organization who's looking to make money off of it, you know what I'm saying? They're going to promote what they can promote to the masses, per se, and get yeah. the best vote. You know what I'm saying? Male and female versus the guy doing it. He's looking only to get one customer, or maybe, ideally, he's looking to get one customer, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's right. just a, a female. Um, Another thing that we think that also can change the way that relationships are viewed also can be conversations in regards to um, roles played within the relationship, right? You know, um, we recently seen um, there was a lot of speculation about conversations because Gabrielle Union invited, you know, the public into their home by stating how um, her and Dwayne kind of split uh, split responsibilities throughout the house, right? And it's like, you know, maybe they split things for their own household and then they also personally take care of different households that they own. Um, that they have on their own as well, right? And so a lot of people kind of looked at that and was like, oh man, that seems shocking. That seems kind of crazy, right? Um, but and and then it also made it almost seemed as though people kind of judged her a little bit more because it was like, why are you, you know what I'm saying, accepting a guy that's willing to go 50-50 with you as opposed to just realizing that maybe that's something that worked for her. That's what she wanted to get with the type of guy and for her to get the type of guy that she wanted to have. That's what, you know, came with that. Um, so I think sometimes, too, like the way that people like look to have um, deal with certain things within the relationships, whether it's financing as well as also it could be um, something as far as monogamy versus polygamy. Um, that's a polyandry or whatever the word is exactly. A term. Oh, um, oh it's monogamy, polygamy. Polygamy, pardon me. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. th- those two things are factors as well. You know, some people aren't willing to have those type of conversations about open relationships or situations like that. Other people may be willing to do that. So um, those are other factors in which, you know, people may see people who may have those type of arrangements within their own marriage and think something about that and think something about um, why that may be and, how, and, and who they are. Uh, who those couples are, who those individuals are within their relationship. And, you know, that's another reason for people to conversate about other individuals' um, relationship. And, you know, that's the conversation that I think that individuals within the relationship need to have in order for them to decide what's adequate for them to move forward, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, I think, you, you know, you touched on some other things, like as far as some of the double, double standards, you know, um, like you said, some of it was the imagery. Another one that we just recently mentioned was, you know, um, within the financing, you know, while it's okay for a man to pay for everything, it would look absurd for a woman to do that for a guy. You know what I'm saying? If a woman did that, she may not even want to let anyone know that she was doing some things like that because it could be viewed as embarrassing. Um, and that was the kind of situation that we had as well with Gabrielle, who mentioned that, you know what I'm saying? That was a situation of hers in the past. But, but you know, I, w- I want to make this point, like, as the cost of living has gone up, inflation has gone up, I feel like, you know, a lot of women kind of want the traditional man in terms of the financial aspect, but in terms of, you know, the the social aspect, they want, you know, you to be liberal, right? So they want you to pay for everything, not really 50-50, But when it comes to like, you know, accepting the the current Western social standard, they want you to be more liberal on that. Um, I've noticed that from a man's perspective here in the United States. Um, I don't know what you've noticed on that. And I feel like that's definitely a, a weird double standard. It's not even a double standard. It's just a weird situation that's going on today, which I think kind of leads to the situation where, you know, a lot of relationships have caught, have a lot of conflict because if you're a guy who's not making enough and these is a lot of beautiful women out there, they might take to online talents. There's a lot of live streaming that women can do a lot of stuff 
where they can essentially sell their beauty and you know whatever they're doing and monetize that which is nothing wrong with that all for you getting your paper but you know that that can definitely interfere with people trying to get into serious relationships with these women because there's always going to be that threat and attention of other men who definitely have more means than you or at least showing that they have more means than you and willing to put up uh where you can't put up so uh, there's definitely that situation at work. And is that adequate behavior of a woman to do if she is in a relationship with a guy and, you know, she decides to, you know, monetize her beauty? You know, what do you what do you think about that? Eve? Um, if the question is, if a woman is looking to make a career in a profession, per se, you know, I saw the awful looks. Um. Honestly, I think it all depends on how they choose to go about it. Um, because like you said, there are numerous avenues in which they can do so. You know what I'm saying? So um, if they choose to do some level of modeling, you know, fine. If they choose to do some level of burlesque dancing or things of that nature, you know what I mean? Whatever if they choose to do, you know, like whatever type of level of entertainment, I think you just have to be able to be comfortable with yourself. Like I think that's the first like start of it all as, as a guy in general, especially in today's society, because again, a lot of women are feeling a lot more liberated and they do feel a lot more like, you know, they should be able to address however they would like to dress and do whatever they would like mm-hmm. to do. Um, and so it's like, you have to be able to be confident enough to know that no matter what's going on, that that woman is with you because she wants to be with you. So like for me speaking as a guy standpoint, that's how I look at it. Like you just got to be able to know, like no matter what you are, who you are. So even if they do run into somebody who maybe have more than you, you know what I'm saying? You could just look at yourself and say, you know what? Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but they can't, you know what I'm saying? Beat me and being me. Like they can't just be, and, and, I, and I dedicate my life to being the person that I choose to be, stand up, you know, whatever qualities that you have, that you value. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of times if you have those right qualities and characteristics, there's not a lot of people that's going to uh, embody those things. And, be willing to be good people as well, right? Like, so, you know, that's something that you can kind of hold your hat on and say, you know, if you do, that is the case, then, oh, well, it's not, you know, it's their loss, not yours type of thing, right? You know, so um, that's how I look at it, you know, just being confident and and so being able to be supportive of, even though at the same time, I think it all depends on the level of access that, you know, that woman is giving to of herself, you know? Some guys aren't really fully comfortable with knowing that, any guy could pull up a picture of his woman's, you know what I'm saying, private areas or imagery of his woman, you know what I'm saying, looking kind of sexy or salacious because it's like, you know, you come in, you try on some lingerie and you showing that, but you also just took pictures in a bathing suit and other people got that, you know what I mean? As a guy, like, is they going to really, you know what I mean, make you feel truly special? Like, maybe not, but then again, like, you going to probably, if, she, if you attracted to your girl, like, you're not going to care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's right there and she's looking good. You're going to be focused on that. Start really thinking about what somebody else might have and what they could have and see, like, I don't know. But, like, but, but, but yeah, action. you might not be thinking about that until it comes into your face, right? Like, if they're doing some of that live streaming, um, online stuff, you're, you're bound to see some of that stuff because, I mean, especially if if y'all live together, you're definitely going to see if you don't live together, you know, she, and she's honest and forefront with you. She'll tell you what's going on, why she can't do certain stuff right now, or she's busy or whatever. When you ask about the nature of her work and she tells you that might create like, you know, maybe an inferior complex with some man, maybe some doubt. Uh, she's talking to other guys, stuff like that. Cause she is, she might not be cheating or something, but you know, she's definitely giving them attention And some people might feel like, you know, when you're entertaining other guys and listening to them, that's a form of cheating as well. So it depends on how people look at it, like uh, emotional cheating, uh, for lack of better words. So it depends. Which, again, and and I think that, see, and that's funny because I feel like that also is, you know, we're talking about two things because, one, that's her work environment, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's the type of quality and the character uh, of work that they're in so she's just working in her profession is she really doing something that's outside of the profession per se maybe not right but at the same time you know that's another thing that goes into like the whole imagery of a relationship right because 
as a guy, if you do express those type of emotions and things of that nature, you might look, be looked at to be a weaker male. You might be looked at to be, you know, somebody who can't just accept a woman in all of her liberation. And that, in turn, is, again, another double standard within images of relationships because it's like, as you being the male, showing emotion, that might make a woman be like, oh, no, I don't really like him. Look at him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's acting out of pocket he's acting out of character just because of something happened like he's losing control because he feel like he doesn't have control of the situation and so therefore now like look like look how they're reacting right like they're mad they're upset about some things that you know what i'm saying they can't even control so um i think that's another thing where us as guys we have to be very careful about how you go about that because again you could lose her based off of how you're moving off of the situation you, you, you can have a disagreement but the way you handle that disagreement is going to be very, very um, um, telling as to uh, how that relationship, how she may look at that relationship, because she might view you in a different way based on how you react to certain things that's going on, right? So, um, and again, on the flip side, a woman can yell, curse, do all of this stuff, cry, all of that, and a guy ain't going to look at her and be like, oh, she's less of a woman because she did those things. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, so there again is, is, is examples of maybe some sort of unspoken rules within the relationship as well as, you know, double standards. But I also want to go back to the whole working environment, because I think you also have to put that into play as well. When we talk about like, you know, entertainers who dress provocatively, you know, we mentioned the whole, um, Sierra thing. You can go back to the, uh, little Kim poster when she had the little lollipop and then Nikki did the remake of it. You know what I mean? Um, the hardcore image, I think it was. Um, there's always kind of been a level of sex sales within the music industry, especially for women. Um, right. You know, and so it's like those type of things are somewhat to be expected. I think even when we saw the image of Beyonce on um, the Renaissance album, it was one that was like really nice. You know what I'm saying? As for on, on a male side of the game, you feel me? But it's just like, you know, at the same time, I think it takes a special type of husband to be able to say, okay, yeah, baby, go out there, pop your stuff like that, let the world see you in all your glory, you know what I'm saying? And still be cool enough saying, okay, bam, like, that's my girl, that's whatever. Yeah, niggas can get their little looks and, you know, fantasize and do all the stuff that they want to, but who cares because I know where home is type of situation. Um, so, you know, I think you get some of those things as well when you deal with people who are working in an entertainment type of lifestyle or maybe a nightlife type of lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they're like a DJ, you know, playing in clubs or, you know, doing things of that nature, a bartender um, or something like that, where they're in these type of environments like that, where they're around a lot of a lot of people, a lot of times. But time, e, we're, of we're, 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 we're seeing this stuff even outside of like your normal industry. Yeah, we know celebrities and entertainment and stuff like that. Okay, they're going to do that, but we're seeing like everyday people trying to be, you know, more out there and show off publicly, even though they're in not so much of a public relationship, like they don't have that celebrity status. You know? and, and see, and that's, because, and that's a tough because part. now we're getting to the point where you know you can have a little social media following of a exactly. lot of decent amount of people. So you you know you want to appease your fans and stuff, even though you're not a big household name throughout the country, you're kind of big in your area, a little kind of big around the country. You might have some fans all over. That's why I um uh, talked about the live streaming and stuff like that because your partner might have a hundred thousand followers which isn't you know that's kind of the norm for a lot of these, these people in that beauty type of industry modeling whatever etc cetera, etc cetera, live streaming stuff like that and you know in your guy you might not have that and you might just have a normal job so it, it, it would kind of conflict you get what i'm saying you get what i'm saying with that um, somewhat, like, as far as maybe, like, understanding the lifestyle and the access that they may have to other things, like, absolutely, yeah. because, again, you guys are on two different, you know, stratospheres with that, but I also think that it goes back to, again, the core of who that guy is. If that guy has a foundation within that relationship and how things go, then he may be comfortable enough allowing her and trusting her to, you know, understand whatever the boundaries are that they have set for their relationship and trust that they're going to stay within that frame. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And if he feels comfortable with that, 
kudos to that brother and you know what I'm saying? Like, and kudos to that couple, you feel me? But I think a lot of times, a lot of people will listen to what somebody else has to say about things and what they think society thinks about things. And they might let those things kind of um, dictate how they look to pr perceive or go about their day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when dealing with, with dealing with their partner. And I think that's when it kind of gets a little bit more tricky, right? Because it's like now you're listening to, oh, well, she might, you know, she got such and such follow her and he he got a blue check and, you know, he played for such and such and such and such and he did this and he signed that, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's like, okay, like, okay, cool. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Like, regardless, it, again, it's like you got to always believe, I, in my personal belief, I think as a partner or as a person in general, you got to believe that you are who you are. Like, people say this all the time, like, everybody thinks that they're a star, but you got to, I ain't necessarily saying you got to think that you're a star, but you definitely got to believe that you have something that's worth sharing with somebody, something that's worth, you know what I'm saying, being kept and something that you know that has value. So it's like, if you know you have those things, then you're not going to let nobody play with you. You're not going to let nobody, you know what I'm saying, think that it's going to be kind of cool and not, and you're not going to waver on some of your viewpoints on things. You're going to be a lot more head step or excuse me, steadfast and making sure that you stay within the parameters of, of, of what you're comfortable with. And right, that that's one of the negative aspects of the that you have social to media, E. Like that's one of the negative aspects of social media that, you know, we're experiencing today because, you know, before that, it would just be like your local area. You would have to compete with your local area. You know, the day-to-day -day guys, they probably got their things going on. The girls got their things going on. Now it's like you're competing globally with the whole world and you can connect with so many different people and so many different perspectives and so many different things, so much information coming at you. I think, I think you know, people are having a hard time adjusting, especially with relationships, because I feel like even globally, it's like, you know, relationships are being stressed. And especially in this country where the divorce rate is very high and, you know, the marriage rate isn't as high as it should be. And people, when they do get married, don't last as long as they should. So, uh, it's a big issue in this country, um, you know, and, and the image is important because I think that's a foundation for your relationship and on keeping it going and keeping it strong because, you know, the, the best way to go is just trying to have the best image as possible, try not to step on anyone's toes and trying to, you know, represent your partner wherever you go because once you get into a, a relationship, a marriage you're not just representing yourself anymore. You're representing, you know, the family unit. You represent the marriage. You represent the family. You represent everything. So um, I think that's important for people to really take a look at because, you know, relationships are crumbling in this country and it's an important aspect of a relationship is the image and the behavior that you're displaying, like that people can see publicly. You know, that's very important. Whether it's what's going on in your house, that's what's going on in your house internally and privately but publicly that's important what you display because that public influence can affect your relationship if people are coming back with negative things and it's like hey you're messing up my reputation here whether it's a, a man or a woman like you know that's going to cause issues in your relationship so it does play an important role that i think people tend to overlook like oh who cares what people outside say that's not true people do care about that so i think it's important to stress it um, but I also would say too, Malik, to kind of, you know, go up against that as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be people who have a global um, reach, like uh, on a more, um, more day to day type of situation. It can be for people working in professions with like, say, long hours, and they're in the same spaces, you know, you're working with somebody 10, 12 hours out the day, you know what I'm saying? Um, and y'all, have maybe a lot of downtime throughout the job or throughout the day or y'all are able to get tasks done um, effectively but still have to physically be present in a place, that could cause for opportunities for, you know, people to um, maybe um, bend some rules within the relationship or do some things that could prevent them to, um, to, to prevent them from necessarily being able to, 
to represent themselves in their relationship uh, effectively. I think um, another one of those type of situations where that could happen is um, professions in which there aren't a lot of people of the opposite sex, right? Um, <laughs> you can look at that from being in like situations like maybe say education, where there haven't always been a lot of male leadership in those places or meals in that in those arenas you know sometimes you might see that like in the healthcare area right where they may not necessarily have a lot of uh, male representatives uh, in that area uh, in those fields right um and i say like a nursing as opposed to you know a doctor or something like that um but those are the type of fields and things where you know it might happen or it could be other ones like we said earlier with the long hours you know jobs were getting you in places like i said like a factory type of situation a lot of times you know what i'm saying there's a lot of times where that can happen as well because you're right there you're next to somebody all day big old place you know what i'm saying little corners and crooks and cranes that people can kind of get lost in you know and, and, and indulge in opportunities to you know disrespect their relationship so um those are things that i think also kind of um affect the way people may look at certain um, individuals and within relationships um, right, based off of even the professions that they are in and you know what I'm saying, how they move in those professions. Um, but I also want to say like, who do we think are the most affected by this? Um, and to me, I think it's the younger generation, of course, you know, these are people who are having to look to try to figure out how relationships are, like, you know, what the boundaries are for them, how they should relate, you know, what they think that um, uh, how they for a young lady, how they think that a guy should treat them, for a young man, how you should treat a woman, and how you should be, um, and how a woman should treat you as well. Looking at those things and kind of that, uh, in a, and learning exactly what is comfortable, what's not comfortable, what you know what I'm saying. They should be able to do what they shouldn't. Those are the type of people that's going to be the most confused because as they're trying to develop and learn things, they're maybe like learning it from some people who have a different perspective on life, but that might not be one that will be the best one for those kids in the long term or people in the long term, right? But, you know, when we're younger, you might see something shiny and you don't necessarily know that that necessarily isn't always gold, that it could be fool's gold or, you know what I'm saying, something else. So um, those are some of the things that I, I think also um, some of the people who can be most affected and, and how it kind of affected uh, affect them, but I, I also feel like some of the things that can curtail that is people being able to have positive images of relationships and, and conversations with people within positive relationships. So if you see somebody that you think are happy within their relationship, you ask them questions maybe about how they're able to maintain that happiness and maybe see if they can take you in and mentor you on some of the things that they're doing or how they're able to be successful within that relationship. Those are the type of things that I think will really help us kind of change um if, if individuals have imagery issues or if they're having behavior type issues that are negatively being reflected upon their significant other like, right you, anything you want to say in closing um in closing yeah i was going to say i kind of agree with that uh, so, uh that one of the biggest issues the people most affected is the youth because you know um you know it's affecting relationships currently so what's going to be left for the people coming up after our generations and the next generation after that. So that's something to think about, you know, the direction we're heading into uh, what's important and how we can kind of create this balance of where people can express themselves, but also, you know, uh, the relationship and things like that are intact and can last and, and be sustained uh, for the long term because that's important for people in terms of uh, not only just socially, but economically as well. So I think um, figuring out that balance where people can express themselves, but also maintain good, healthy relationships is important. Um, so that's all I wanted to say on, on closing. All right. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and go into the book of the month, which is Finding Me by Viola Davis. Um, I believe this is a book in which she kind of gives some experiences of her life and things that she's kind of learned throughout her uh, journey. Um, also, we have a um, Black Business of the Month by Tina Marie, uh, not to be confused with the singer, Tina Marie. Uh, 
and this business is called Big Fine Lingerie. Um, it is a plus size lingerie um, website. Uh, they provide uh, excuse me, they provide lingerie for women of plus size. The website is bigfine.ueniweb.com. Um, you guys can find them and support them on that website as well. And then for our motivational minute uh, quote, excuse me, our motivational minute, the quote that we have this month is by unknown, but it is a wise word that says, be with the person who always choose to fight for you. Um, I think, you know, that's one of the golden rules, right? When it comes to relationships is, you know, be with somebody who wants to be with you, be with somebody who, you know, sees the value in you and who, you know, um, values you. I think if you do that, then um, that also will help you want to be able to move in a way in which you can uh, make sure that your behaviors and actions um, are honoring them as well. And, you know, you do your part to make sure that you don't disrespect them as well, because that person is fighting and showing you that they're willing to do their part to be in your life. So um, with that being said, you know, I want to thank you all for uh, coming to this episode and watching us. You know, as now you can catch us on Wednesdays on our What's Up Wednesdays. Um, you can also catch our podcast live on Wednesday, excuse me, Saturdays around 1 p.m. We'll have those um, episodes up. And we all wanted to let you guys know our social media handles will be posted here momentarily. Please feel free to contact us with any questions, um, anything that you may want to see us talk about, um, anything that we may have talked about in the past that you had any you know questions about or, or wanted to comment on. Feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comment section. Also, don't you know, forget to like, share, subscribe. You know, be able to reach back out to us and. Um, uh, let your people know, you know, uh, some interesting talking points, things that, you know, you can discuss throughout the week uh, with individuals of like minds. Um, so want to thank you guys with that. And Malik, you got anything real quick before we wrap up? No, I think thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Um, we reached one of our milestones on our subscriber account. Keep subscribing, keep liking, keep sharing, um, you know, uh, keep up the same energy. Um, we appreciate y'all support on everything and um, have a blessed one peace alright guys peace